committee. Uh, as a parent and an advocate, I thank you for inviting me here today and for having these difficult discussions. Uh, my name is Laura Marquez Garrett. I'm senior counsel at the Social Media Victims Law Center. Uh, we are a small Washington state law firm formed at the end of 2021 to represent children and families harmed by social media products. Uh, who knew that just a year later, we would be first not only on issues of general social media harms, anxiety, depression, addiction, exploitation, and others, uh, but also on the deaths of American children by fentanyl poisoning at historic rates. Thousands and thousands of children, uh, enough that I have been told that there is a, uh, there are findings to the effect that our country has been put at a strategic disadvantage because of the number of children who are dying. Um, and yet it's still happening. Now, what is different about this crisis is that for the first time in our nation's history, uh, children's, teens, and young adults are dying at the same, if not greater rates than their adult counterparts. Um, now in 2022, I met Amy Neville, uh, who spoke just a moment ago, and eight other families uh, who had lost their children to fentanyl poisoning uh, through Snapchat. Uh, maybe this is just a social media issue the legal community thought. Um, our esteemed co-counsel, CA Goldberg, thought different. Uh, we investigated, we researched the issue, uh, we met with those families and many, many others. We met with members of law enforcement and experts in the fields of technology and drugs. Uh, in October 2022, uh, we filed our first fentanyl-related complaint against Snapchat. Now, at the time, we had been retained by 10 families who lost their children to fentanyl poisoning. As I sit here today, less than two years later, SMBLC has been retained by more than 160 families who lost their children to fentanyl poisoning via social media. That number goes up every week, sometimes every day. These are children ranging in age from 13 to 23 years old. Uh, in almost every instance, I think there may be four exceptions, the Snapchat social media platform was involved. In every instance, uh, the fentanyl was being distributed in the form of counterfeit or laced drugs, for example, a pill pressed to look like Percocet or Xanax, even marijuana. Um, and in every instance, uh, these were children who had no history of drug use prior to when their social media use began. In fact, what I hear over and over from young people goes something like this. I was 10 or 12 or 14. I wanted a Snapchat because of the silly filters. All my friends were using it. Uh, I wanted to be popular. I'd never heard of marijuana um, or I'd heard of it but had no interest. And then Snapchat started sending me videos of other kids smoking. It looked cool. It looked fun. It looked normal. Uh, then Snapchat started sending me quick ads. These are the uh, AI-driven user recommendations. So then Snapchat started sending me quick ads for plugs, which is a term for drug dealers. Snapchat said these were my friends. It gave me points when I sent messages. It made me feel liked. It made me feel like I fit in. I was a kid. I didn't understand. And Snapchat made it seem safe and fun. I hear this again over and over. Uh, I want to give one other brief example, which is in 2023, an adult Snapchat user searched for a few common drug terms to see if Snap would divert him to its uh, public service announcement, which is what Snapchat said it was doing. He had used Snapchat for eight years and had never seen a drug menu and had never been connected with a drug dealer. Within 24 hours after running this search looking for PSAs, a dealer messaged him with a drug menu. This certainly suggests that his simple search for PSAs resulted in Snapchat pushing out his data to drug dealers. This is how these products are designed and programmed. Uh, now, death by fentanyl poisoning it is not something these children are seeking out. It is where Snapchat takes them because engagement equals revenue. Uh, so I'm here today to tell the committee the death of American children by fentanyl poisoning, it's not just someone else's problem. It's not even just an internet or social media problem. It is an epidemic to which Snapchat has contributed more than every other social media platform put together. But there's a silver lining. This means it's a problem uh, that you and the state of California can do something about because California is where companies like Snapchat live. Uh, there are countless opportunities to legislate for the safety of California's children and to make a difference in the rate of fentanyl deaths nationwide. These aren't even extreme examples. In other industries, uh, they would be expected, for example, if a company knows the drugs are being marketed and sold, uh, whether because of available technology or police or user reports, they should take those accounts down. They should provide a 1-800 number for reporting and consequences for companies that ignore the reports. Uh, they should have effective in-app reporting mechanisms requiring them to provide a receipt and respond within set times. I cannot tell you how many of the drug dealers in these cases kept dealing, even after being reported uh, to Snapchat, including by police, 
uh, when police said, hey, this, this individual we believe is, is dealing drugs on your app, um, Snapchat left those accounts up and those dealers killed more children, uh, including in Amy Neville's case. Um, legislation could require these companies to stop designing their systems to destroy evidence on the back end. That is not user privacy. Uh, that is what Enron did in 2002. It's called obstruction of justice. Um, if a platform distributes to persons under 18, they should be preserving that data for six or 12 months, and they should have adequate staff so they can respond to law enforcement in a timely and reasonable manner. Again, we shouldn't need laws for this, but apparently we do. Uh, social media companies also collect device ID. That's like a fingerprint for your phone, for your computer. Every device has one. Every time a user logs on, they collect that information. If they wanted to, they could block by device. So if someone uses a phone to deal drugs, that phone should be out of circulation instead of what happens now, which is they open 10 more accounts on the same device. Um, lastly, they could stop recommending strangers to kids, stop telling children they know these people, uh, pushing them to connect, giving them points to meet up with strangers, literally drawing maps to find them. Um, I understand that just shutting down one platform is not an option, even though we would see results quickly, but there are countless other ways we can protect our children from these harms. I hope that this committee will consider every one of them and fast um, because our children are facing an unprecedented crisis and they need our help. Thank you.